going to record this and see if we say anything interesting for me to put on a okay. podcast. Yeah, so I had a, a great interview with Christian Barr. And uh, I will send you the audio right now. I do think that we should um, divvy it up into a couple episodes. Um, so let me know what you, th- what you think. I don't know if you want me to try to give you some good breaking points or if you just want to listen and do it yourself. He's going to do the guest registration. Um, but really, really interesting um, interview. Cool, cool. What, um, any highlights? What, what What's his book again? He, um, he wrote the Garden State Parkway Murders, a cold case mystery. Uh, it came out in 2020. And it is... Um, it goes into great detail about the unsolved murders of two girls in 1969, Memorial Day weekend, uh, coming out of, they, they had come down to Ocean City to stay for that week for like three days. And then they left, came over to Summers Point, went to the diner for breakfast, and then never made it back home to the one girl's family's home in Pennsylvania. And the car was found abandoned on the side of the parkway, right, right, very close to my house, like very close to my house. Um, oh, wow. And then their bodies were later found. So they stayed, and what's interesting to me is that they stayed in a, like a, you know, like one of these summer boarding houses about a block, two blocks from my office in Ocean City. And then they went to the diner, which is literally right around the corner from my house. And then uh, they were found right uh, exit 31.9 which is about a mile from my house on the parkway or two miles from my house on the parkway so uh unsolved you know he did a ton of research about 10 years worth of research interviewed a bunch of people um really well done book and actually unbeknownst to me uh there is going to be a uh something released on TV that they, they finished recording or finished filming rather not that long ago and it's going to be coming out fairly soon. Oh, cool. Uh, That's so, helpful. Yeah. That'll get Googled in yeah. your episodes. Or yeah. So, so, uh, but very, very good. I think, I think it turned out well. All right. And cool. you know, he's, he's, you know, he's an attorney. He, uh, has, he's an attorney in Cherry Hill. Um, but he's, you know, still working on this. I mean, so he's been, kind of de- devoted to it for a very long time. So I'm excited to have uh, have you hear it. Oh, I'm, I'm psyched to get it. That sounds like a good one. Good way to kick yeah, off uh, sure. 2023 on the NJ Criminal Podcast. What is this? Now he ties this back to, um, what's his name? A uh, Ted Bundy? Well, he talks about the different suspects that have been developed over the years. Um. Uh, one of the people that he talks about towards the end of the book is Ted Bundy because Ted Bundy had some connections to Ocean City. He actually acknowledged to two separate psychiatrists, you know, that he had been in Ocean City at that time. Um, he had a connection to Ocean City because as a kid, his family had vacationed here in Ocean City. Um, he never comes out and confesses to it, but you know, there is some reason to think that he is perhaps a suspect. So we talked about that for a while. Interesting. Yeah. So very, very interesting to me. Who's next on uh, legal? Uh, I'm not sure. I got a couple. Uh, I got a couple of things I'm working on, but uh, I'm not 100% sure who will be next. Um, the. Um... I'll probably knock out a bunch of stuff for the Bridgeton Beacon this week, by the way, I think. Okay, I'm... yeah, I want to interview, I want to keep that going, so I'm going to keep going back and forth. So I did Melissa Helmbrecht release that, did this interview for the for the NJ Criminal, and now I want to think of somebody to interview for uh, the Beacon. So, your interviews have been great. There'll be more. They're easy. I mean, you know. You run into a character, you throw a mic in front of them, and in rocket science. There's a lot of characters around. There are a lot of characters around. So, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I can't take credit for the heavy lifting. I mean, that's just, that's just finding good people. 
with uh, interesting things going on. Pea crabs is my favorite so far, clearly. But pea crabs, that's so great. Um, Who knew? And then, uh, yeah, I'll get uh, Barry recorded because I, I know he owned an insurance agency in Bridgeton for like fifty years, or so. Oh, okay. Good. He he would have a lot of businesses that he would have been related to, and threw him lots of stories and name drops that he could do if I can get him on the mic for an hour. That'd be great. Yeah, so that's easy. Uh, and mm -hmm. then I think I yeah I've definitely got other Bridgeton Beacon stuff going on. A uh, going back to the winery series uh, might push more of that in there, but I've got a, a connection I just made on LinkedIn. Who's a wine buyer, former finance executive, who's now in the wine business? I'm like, well, that's got podcast written all over it. So I'm gonna. I never, I never interviewed uh, the guy at Sunny Sloop. He had offered to inter uh, to be interviewed last year. What's his name? Um, um, you're putting me on the spot, and you're recording me, and I can't remember. Um, I should know it. I, I just can't think of it off the top of my head. No big deal. Uh, that's yeah. worth following up on. And so I was thinking, yeah. I'm, and so I can repurpose that for the winery podcast. Right, exactly. And then I, I was so this woman. I was thinking maybe I'll do a whole season quick on the winery podcast of people who aren't wine growers or makers, but people who work in the industry from different perspectives. Like if she's a buyer and it seems like she's like a buyer for hire, like I don't see her related mm -hmm. to a specific distributor or anything like that. It seems like she's a contract um, consultant type. So I found that interesting and I'm sure there's a, if, you know, that's one LinkedIn navigator search to find all kinds of wine related solutions providers consultants hell there's probably accountants who specialize in computer is that me, is that me or you it's my computer yeah oh my i computer. thought maybe ready, you i thought maybe you were to trying to drive trash. a barge under a bridge <laughs> no i'm i'm trying to i think it's time to turn in my dell <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's about had it. It sounds like it. Yeah. Um, either that or you have to feed the hamster on the wheel a little bit better. <laughs> um, yeah. I, 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 I've completely lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm... Oh, winery stuff. All kinds of winery yeah. stuff that isn't growers necessarily um, or the wineries themselves and get a bunch of solutions. provided. And I think that could potentially be a source of sponsors. Uh, because I think continuing a wine topic, that's probably going to mostly uh, have a wine industry audience. You might get people who want to do, you know, sponsor it, who, I don't know, agricultural consultants or who the, there's so much in that industry you could get people. But so mm -hmm. I'll use a season to collect a list of them, get them to love podcasting. And then when I start up with the wine growers again, some of those people I worked with in the interim should be very likely potential partners. On did you uh, do you have a whole other website for the winery? Yeah, winerypodcast.com. Winer oh, winerypodcast.com. Yeah, um, that's like a whole other thing. Um, yeah, it was a good domain name, so I couldn't help myself. And who cares if if I only hit do the winery podcast three months a year? I mean, for mm -hmm. goodness sake, who cares? Three, four years from now, mm -hmm. I've got a few hundred episodes and a couple thousand YouTube clips. I mean, well worth the investment mm -hmm. of letting it, you know, ripen. You know what I haven't listened to yet that I want to listen to is the the Landscape podcast. Those guys are great. Are i got to get them sponsors. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, you just can't beat. So they're talking about gardening often they're talking about landscaping all the time they're talking about design and different climates they're talking about different plants they're talking about growing for food or growing for you know decoration or landscape and um every once in a while they just you know somebody will bring up a new truck or uh, product or 
and they just get all fired up about like these tools and supplies and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my God, I got to make a list That's of all these suppliers and tools that these mm -hmm. guys are freaking out about. And shout out Mulchmate, these guys in Maryland, I think it is. These, these guys love the Mulchmate. They keep talking about the Mulchmate all the time. I don't and know what that is. It's, uh, it's, well, if you're a landscaper, it's gold is what it is. It's, it, um, it's like the back of a truck that's basically a push button mulch dispenser into your wheelbarrow. Like you li literally like you're dispersing, you know, coffee grounds and making espresso. Yeah. You just press a button and you're dealing with huge volumes of it and it moves it in the truck for you. So all the work around getting these wheelbarrows filled and staged and all that stuff, like somebody would have to be either be in the truck or whatever it's just it, these guys like it and there's a bunch of other tools like that like apparently somebody makes and maybe it's for themselves but they make this thing called a switch and go chassis or body for the ford f550 truck where you can just put different backs on it all the time and one of the backs could be the mulch mate for example and so then you can just take these things around uh, to different jobs. It's very efficient. I mean, you can make a list as long as you're on why these guys would be fired up. But like, there's something, there's just good listening. And there's a market of people out there who like listening to this because but that's almost, what, yeah. But the, the thing is, you could replace the subject matter with almost anything. But, you know, it would be like listening to archers talk about a new arrow or something. Like, People who are very expert talking about something that's very niche and being really genuinely excited about it. You can listen to that mm -hmm. on almost any topic. Like that describes my top 10 list of podcasts that I listen to, seven right. of which have nothing to do with my lifestyle. I just happened across these people who talk about certain things with such great excitement in their own voice that right. I didn't turn the channel and I subscribed. Now I listen to all kinds of crazy I listen to two physics podcasts that absolutely make me feel like a full-blown gorilla. Really? I have that's no so idea cool. what these guys are talking about. None. Like, it's, 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 that's not there's true. A, it I mean, just I, goes to show that there's a whole world out there. Yeah. Right? And so these guys are fired up, you know, all the time on this show. And um, they're all young. They're all, I think, having great success. Mm -hmm. You know, compared to the you know, the host of the show is 26 years old, runs two, you know, well-oiled organizations, one for landscape design and, and install and one for like maintenance and corporate maintenance and things like that. And he, mm -hmm. but he's already systemized like to scale. And most people don't do that in the first 10 years. Of, and he's done it in the first five. He's 26. So he started at 21. And he's surrounded with other dudes who are like fully systemized and set up to scale. They don't have to have somebody worried about, did everybody get their bills? Are our customers getting communications about, oh, it's springtime now. We have to, we're going to treat your yard for this to get ahead of X, Y, or Z. Like, we just got to sit down and think about that because it's already been systemized. So you can manage 800 clients, 8,000 clients. One of the guys he brought on the mm -hmm. show was, you know, jeez. Uh, uh, what do you say at 14,000 accounts for landscape maintenance. And it's, it's just all in their ability to, um, you know, be very fully automated and systemized in terms of dealing with the client. And then all you have to do is services and manage services. You don't have to worry about running the business because the business damn near runs itself. And um, mm -hmm. those are really interesting conversations to hear young people have. And then when you mix in like trucks and tools and, Stuff like that, it's kind of great. So I think, yeah, I think they've got legs. I think that's a really potentially, um, I think they could, they could have a good curve in terms of getting traction in a lot of different avenues. Maybe it's YouTube. Well, their YouTube, they had an existing YouTube and it perked up right away. So they did... I don't know, an extra 1,200 YouTube views and a bunch of hours. And, 
Yeah, I, I was surprised by how much of an impact their YouTube um, received from us posting the podcast highlights there. And wow. I took a look. Actually, I had a pleasant surprise this weekend, though it's mildly embarrassing to admit I hadn't checked what was going on in a few months with my own YouTube channel. And How's it going? Freaking killing it. That's murdering great. it. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I had no idea. So, yeah, way ahead of where I thought it would be. And um, so, I think there's values to the to the clips too. I do. Well, um, th th that's the other thing. So you your traffic is ninety percent clip traffic mm -hmm. in the YouTube Shorts feed. I haven't posted clips to this account ever. So all of my traffic is long form videos. And I think oh, wow. I'm going to keep it that way because if it isn't broke, I do think I'll end up with some clips in there because the shorts just, that's an easy, at the, you know, for me, that's going to be an easy like 10,000 views real quick and probably 50 shortly down the road as long as I, but now that I see what's going on here, if I keep dumping content like this frankly into it and start adding clips i think it might even be worth some of my clients who maybe didn't have a youtube before i checked yours yours is doing i think very well uh, mm -hmm. the legal one we're just starting the bridgeton beacon i think that's got great potential so i'm not going to recommend this idea for you in any way but a bunch of my clients not real active on social not running their youtube I can build channels or playlists on my YouTube for some of my clients and probably get them far more traction than they can just build the playlist with those very same videos that I'm hosting on my YouTube channel because that's where we're getting wow. views for niche podcasting and they'll still have their own brand stuff on their own YouTube. But mine was doing well enough that I was like, oh boy, there's a couple clients who should piggyback on this instead of a cult. Wow. Uh, you know, they're just not youtube minded and i don't i don't blame many of them like that's fine but i mean my god if i can get them 50 hours of listening or 100 hours of listening every month on their channel because it's attached to mine that's a better start so um you know i got 400 hours of watch time or something behind that's my crazy. back when i wasn't looking um that's crazy yeah, so I dropped a couple of those videos that uh, you and I did about law firm podcasts. I dropped them. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. So they went out on my podcast and in YouTube, and then boom, you know, there's another. I looked quick yesterday. It was another 10 hours of listens from those that, in addition to what I would usually get that day. So, um, yeah, it's pretty warmed up, it would appear. Excellent. Um, Excellent. And, good, and good, good stuff. You may be doing video this year too. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I think based on the experiments I'm, I'm doing, it seems like a good, uh, a transition. Well, I, I like your video. I do. Yeah. I like, I like watching it. And I mean, I, even though you're know, just sitting at your desk talking, I. Well, but I, I like also it. mix in all the this, a bunch of a, well, right. HD clips and some animations and motion stuff. So I, 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 I've paid for God knows how much software that does that stuff. And so just dumping content out there, what the hell? It, it, as long, well. as long, yeah, as long as we're talking about things that are relevant to, to podcast, either production or setup or whatever. I'll get it out there because it's it's starting to be very warmly received. Uh, Excellent. Good, good, good. Yeah, I'll I'll check back with you, but I'll I might have a proposal to do a a video like season test in short order, depending on how what your appetite is for that. I mean, I could do it tomorrow if you're like, ooh, I've been wanting you to waiting for you to tell me that. Um, but I do think that's next on the horizon. I think that might be something I talked to the fully threaded i think i would like to try it too um i, I think mean, that could change their podcast uh potentially who's that? the fully threaded the, the fastener mm -hmm. industry news mm -hmm. i think mark that... wanted to do a video remember we had talked about that who did 
uh, Melissa. What, Mark. what kind of video? Like video podcasting. Oh, no, no. In general, you mean like turn her podcast into video? Correct. Hundred percent. Now, I I would have to offer her the whatever beta I come up with because she she flat out asked to do video two months ago. And I was like, no, yeah, like, not, not a chance. Um, right. But um, yeah. If 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 that's still high on her list or your list, I'll uh, I'll know in a week or two exactly what fulfilling that looks like, so I cannot. Bury myself got, with a ridiculous. I mean, I've got the podcast all right on my phone. Oh yeah, cool. And then um, with with there's a a, a myriad of video recording solutions for your. I needed to add a camera that's good, a Logitech camera, because my PCs, you know, all my PCs are throwaway. All my stuff's in the cloud, and I don't treat technology like a lady. And mm -hmm. uh, but. Your pod track hooked to your computer with most any video recording in HD in the right um, perspective, um, framing size, dimensions, sorry. And and we're golden. And I, you know, it's maybe building a library of the little shiny things like legal type animations or legal things that you know enhance what you're saying for anybody who's absorbing it in video form but that aren't required like still it's great just to listen to but adding some mm -hmm. potential visual enhancements like i do you know with 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 these things or with the stuff i post on linkedin i think turns it into super solid business content um Boy, 100%. could get weird with the beacon. If we got video with the beacon, then we might be in. We might be in business there too. Oh, geez, that's a production. Um, all right, I'll uh, I'll get back to you on that. Ritter Broadcasting. <laughs> Ritter Broadcasting. <laughs> Wait, no, I have to incorporate again. I'm not incorporating. <laughs> um, ah, what the hell? Um, all right, uh, I think I've run out of gems. But uh, I'll report back. All right. Um, I have to uh, actually have to go do some court work. So I'm going to handle a case. And then later on today, I'll make sure I upload this audio. Let me know what you think. And what's neat is uh, he actually, Christian Barth, the guy I interviewed today, did three episodes of a, of a podcast that he put together himself and uh, weaved in. A bunch of conversations that he had it's kind of neat so i plug it um you know a lot of you know use garage band just because we're on the topic He's, uh, i believe you use garage band um That's but funny. you know it's a lot of time a lot of time it's time consuming well to do it, that. it's it's you know what after i i might include a link or two to him when i email him his like media kit after he, i get your show produced with some yeah. tools that'll do that for him with like AI. <laughs> yeah. I, it, there's no reason to spend hours like doing audio yeah. engineering. Well, that's what I said. I can't, I don't have the uh, patience for the knowledge to do it. That's why I send everything to you. Now so. that being said, Oh, back to video real quick. Here's the, the wrinkle in the video pitch is every, every, everybody loses the, the, luxury of having their ums or you knows or likes uh, edited out because the video understood. would look positively preposterous if we made those well, no. edits and so right so that, you have that, to that, know that your ability i mean you can edit clips out probably but you're well, not going to be yeah, editing. like we can edit out whole sections, which sounds just awful to me. That's not something we've ever done for any reason in the past, other yeah. than someone makes an egregious factual error. Right. But right, or an inappropriate joke. You've had, <laughs> you've had that. People are gonna have to, you know, keep their shit together in terms of ums and you know and like and all that jazz because it's out of my hands or as a host it's then in your hands you gotta be like listen we're recording you're you're gonna sound like a a, a like machine or an um machine you gotta put a lid on it and just let the pause sit there for a minute 
Yeah, I tried. I tried to not speak over. I, I, uh, I have a couple little tricks. Like I sat back. So, I have found in the past I had a tendency to want to talk over, or interject, and so lately what I've done is when they when the other person's talking, I I sit myself back a little bit, and then I ha- I conscience consciously will make a comment, but I have to, but you know, it makes it conscious because I'm I have to like, lean in to the microphone. Do you, does that make sense? I hit mute lots of times. So That's I can take idea. drinks of my water or mm-hmm. hit the bomb or remember you know, to whatever's going on. Just got to remember to unmute. Yeah, which sometimes I, I forget. So, mm-hmm. but um, that's one. I was just saying that you would have to be more active as a host in stepping in and saying, hey, listen, there's nothing we can do if you keep saying um after every sentence. That And I'll cut the part where you talk to them about it. But it's better to address it at that point, because if we're on video, we can't be, we're just not in a position to cut ums and so forth and, right. you know, get down to that nitty gritty. Right. It, it, Something worth trying. Yeah, it would look like a crazy 80s time stop music video, because people's hands would be jumping all over the screen and shit. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I'm excited about the interview I did today. I think you're going to, I think it's going to be. Oh, I'm uh, fired up. If it's an good, hour and 45 listen. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done one of those in a while. Damn. I know. That's, I know. Holy shit. That's like 30. That's probably 35 clips, maybe. Probably. That's insane. Yeah. I think, I think we could do. Damn, that's a good day on your you know, YouTube what's, channel. What's, 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 uh. I mean, we're talking either what forty five minute episodes or three. I mean, you're yeah, giving me so much. Three, don't, three don't thirty even, minute episodes. Don't even worry about it. Let me just listen to it. There's so much. Okay. It's like, well, what are we? We can't go wrong. Yeah, you listen to it and yeah, then you if, decide. If, I'm gonna, if, I'm gonna just need, send you the whole thing. If I need three separate titles, I'll just do three. If I don't know, we'll see. It, it's it's all good if you're saying it's good. It, I mean. It is. I think the whole thing's good. Um, all right. Yeah, I'll check it that out. That probably makes you nervous when your client, you know, no. your clients say. I think, it's, I think it turned out very well. And it's very interesting. He's done, he's extremely knowledgeable about this case. I only get uh, nervous when you tell me there's something wrong, like you didn't have a knob turned or something. That's when I'm. No. Oh, and I realized what my issue was with my pod track. It was a false cord. My cord that plugs into the outlet went bad. Oh, okay. So I just tried a new cord, and it was perfect. All right, cool. And uh, you've got what, Zoom Pro? Uh, I don't know, Zoom, whatever Zoom is. I pay pay for Zoom. So I pay for unlimited unlimited Zoom. Yeah, you've got Zoom Pro. Okay, then Mm -hmm. you, you could potentially, I hate, the thought of putting out like poorly lit Zoom videos or somebody's got a bad camera on the other end, it's just unfathomable. But with all the just need a place to just need a place to decide where to record it. And with some flashy graphics and whatnot, mm-hmm. I can, you know, dress up the Zoom presentation, but lighting mm-hmm. and like or somebody, you know, their office their their chair's right in front of a window. So they're just like whited out in the background. You know, that's the, mm-hmm. the kind of concerns I have. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe that's just a, well, a on the guest registration. We have an instruction sheet that's like, yeah, these are the bare minimum requirements. I like the way you've got the mic hanging from wherever. What? In, 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 in. Like a boom mic. Oh, it's, uh, it doesn't travel well. It weighs well, legit like 10 pounds. <laughs> Really? So, but you just keep it at home, set up someplace. It's, uh, I think, no, I think I brought that with me from Florida. I mean, it, it doesn't travel well, but, you know, it, mm-hmm. I can, so I bought a big truck. Uh, I see. It's, uh, yeah, why well, are you struggling? You don't like your mic stand? It's okay. It's okay. But I think if we were doing video, I would want oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a mic in front of my face. Yeah, good point. Good point. So That's all. 
Yeah. It's very professional with the mic coming down from above. So you would need to do the video somewhere where you've got really great internet and somewhere that we can rely on the lighting, even if it means buying a light that you set up across the room to really brighten the room, um, mm -hmm. you know, off of. Well, I've got my office and I've got my sun porch and I've got my parents' basement. There are three locations where in down here I record. Yeah. When I'm up in Bridgeton, I can do it in the in the bar, but there's that's dark. no way you want to do it in anything with the word sun in the title of the room because that tells Got me it. that one time a day the room's going to look totally one way, and the other that's some true. other time of day it's not going to look like that in any way, and so true. that would be very detrimental to video production. You'd need multiple light kits mm -hmm. if it's if it's a room, and if it were a sunny day, this. Well, you, you're not looking at me. You're on the phone. Never mind. I was going to say the windows behind me might be real lit up and, and overly bright. But uh, we could address it with a, a, a... And there's a million tutorial YouTube videos about how to record a video well. We could steal all that. Um, all right, good enough. I, uh, I won't belabor it, but I think video's coming. Cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Get me posted on that. All right, after I get. All right, I'm gonna run. I'll let, I'll check in with you when I send this to you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm. Sorry. Let me know if you get a guest registration from him. All right, I'll check. All right, cool. All right, take yeah. care. Bye.